Today's video is all about maximising the hatch rates for our beautiful buff whooping terns. Welcome to English Country Life, my name's Fiona and together with my lovely husband Hugh we run a small holding homestead here in Lincolnshire in the UK and we breed Buff Orpington chickens. Now Buff Orpingtons are notoriously broody and we need to actually raise a lot of hens so we can sell them because they pay for all of the food for our chickens and the infrastructure costs so it's actually quite important that we maximise the clutch sizes. Now a few weeks ago we did publish a video about how we set things up so our broody hens are are supported to maximize clutch sizes and a link to that's up above but this video follows up on that and today we're going to be covering how the numbers actually work and hatch day we're asked a lot about how we maximize the clutch sizes for our hens and it's simply a game of numbers now our hens are buff Orpingtons and large buff Orpingtons at that, so the numbers I'm going to talk about work for our team. They may not work for other breeds. We know that our hens can easily incubate 12 eggs and some can incubate up to 15. And we also know that the hens can safely raise up to 15 chicks. And when I say safely, that means they can keep them warm by keeping the chicks cuddling up close to their skin. So if a hen can cover up to 15 eggs and can keep up to 15 chicks warm, that should work out, but unfortunately not every egg will hatch. Some eggs won't be fertilised, others will start to incubate and then simply stop during the 21 day incubation period, and yet more will not make it through the hatch process. We'll aim for 12 chicks per clutch. And because we know she can safely raise 15, that gives us a good safety margin of three, just in case more hatch. Now to achieve this, because we know not everything will hatch, we'll set 21 eggs. This is more than Puffin can cover, so she only gets some of the eggs. And as we said in our last video, on day one, we gave her six. And the remainder were popped in a Brinsey Maxi 24 incubator to incubate in parallel. Now of the eggs that we had under Puffin and in the incubator, two weren't fertile and we had another two that over the 21 days were fertile but failed to grow to completion. So that meant we went into the hatch day with 17 viable eggs. By hatch day we decided that Puffin could have nine eggs to actually hatch. She could have had more, but first of all, she is a first time broody hen, so we don't know how she's going to react. And secondly, the more eggs that we give her, the higher the risk of newly hatched chicks being accidentally crushed as unhatched eggs move around underneath the broody hen. Now that leaves us eight eggs, because we had 17 that were viable. So those eight are going to be hatched in an incubator and then be returned to Puffin later. We had a mini camera from Ring inside the coop so that we could keep an eye on Puffin without disturbing her. And for my benefit, as my broken leg prevents me from getting upstairs at the moment, Hugh very kindly set up a Ring camera looking at the incubator because that was actually set up on my desk in the upstairs study. With Puffin and her hatch process, there was actually very little to see. And she dug herself a ridiculously deep nest to safeguard the chicks. Now what we were actually looking for was any evidence that the chicks were in trouble. For example, Puffin might have left the nest during the hatch abandoning the chicks, or in very, very rare cases, she might have attacked the newly hatched chicks. And thankfully, in her case, Puffin's hatch went very, very well. Now that was until she moved away from the nest once all of her eggs had actually hatched to reveal three problems. Unfortunately, one of the chicks had been crushed accidentally between two eggs and another of the two eggs had started to hatch and for whatever reason, the chicks had actually died during the process. So we removed those three and that left her with some very, very healthy young chicks. The incubator hatch gave us an opportunity to see more of actually what was happening and we could see the eggs roll as the chicks shifted themselves inside so they could start to make their way out. Only two of the eggs in the Brindley incubator failed to hatch, but overall at the end of the process Puffin had exactly 12 chicks between her hatch and the incubator hatch and they all appeared to be incredibly healthy. 
We did have to introduce the incubator chicks though to puff him. We did have a brooder plate on standby just in case the introduction didn't go well. Now Hugh did leave the introduction to night time as you can see and that's her puffing is sleepy and because she wants the chicks to sleep she's also less likely to move away when he pops the chicks under her. Now the easiest way to introduce the young chicks is to put them under Puffin's wings. Nine times out of ten they'll instinctively bury themselves into Puffin's down feathers. If they're the one in ten though we would just repeat the process but in this case Thankfully, it all goes very smoothly. The following day, Puffin ventured outside and the chicks started to explore the walk-in run. As you would have seen in our previous videos, this is a really safe space for the chicks and allows them to find their feet to gain some speed to keep up with Puffin before the door is opened and they are introduced to the wider flock. We normally open the door to the walk-in run after the chicks have shown that they can keep up with Puffin. But day two came and unfortunately it was raining. So we decided to leave the door to the run shut for a little while longer. That's so Puffin isn't caught out in the rain with the chicks far away from the coop. As you can see, she is great at getting the chicks inside and out of the rain. But as the chicks only have down feathers, it's actually quite dangerous for them to get wet at this stage because they could get incredibly cold. So this is just sensible precautions. But Puffin is doing an amazing job and the hatch has gone so well. There you've got little balls of golden sunshine, as I like to call them, little chicks running around with Puffin, and they're doing tremendously well. They're in rude health. Now this system really does work for us. If you see a broody hen out in the wild, you may see five to seven chicks at a time. They'll rarely hatch as many as 12, but we hatch as many as 12 every single time and it's incredibly successful. It does work for us and we do it safely. We do it in such a way that the broody hen can support those chicks, keep them warm and raise them in a healthy manner. Now if you have liked this content, take a moment and give us a thumbs up down below. If you're not already a subscriber to the channel, hit subscribe and the bell icon. That's a completely free service and you'll get to know every time a brand new video goes live. If you've got any questions for us, just pop it in the comments section and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. But for now, thanks for watching and we we'll look forward to seeing you next time.